Can you believe you're listening to this? Or that you, uh, uh, if you use a form where individuals must identify as male or female, it's racist or homophobic because it excludes the full LGBT experience? Do you have any idea where this insanity will lead? Do you have any idea what this is? Do you understand what they're doing to the faculty at University of California? Another document put out by Janet Napolitano's left-wing fascists is a document entitled The Tool for Identifying Implicit Bias. It instructs faculty how to avoid being biased in evaluations or hiring decisions. Are you ready for this? The document singles out phrases such as hard worker as being euphemisms for bias that must be rooted out. So in other words, if you want to hire a lazy good for nothing, that would be great at the University of California. If you want to hire a moron who can't add two and two and make him a full professor of physics, that would be fine for Janet Napolitano. This is, what, this is what goes on when you've had a communist revolution and the world is turned upside down. And I blame Barry Obama for all of it. He is the most vicious, anti-American creature to have ever inveigled his way into the White House. He was put there by George Soros and the Bilderbergs, as sure as I'm sitting here, and he's not through yet. He's got a lot of months left to destroy everything that's left about this great country. How do you think about How do you feel about that? You better stand up and be counted. I'm warning you. And that means whether you're on a supermarket line or at a PTA meeting, don't let these monsters take over that meeting and tell you what to think. You stand up and you speak out. Be red-faced about it. Be embarrassed about it. But get the guts or you're going to lose everything. I'm warning you. You will even lose your children. What do I mean by you'll even lose your children? Well, in addition to losing your children's mind, you're liable to lose, lose your child entirely. Here's a story you're not going to believe. 11-year-old boy kidnapped by Child Protective Services and his parents were arrested because they left him to play in his backyard alone for 90 minutes. You're not going to believe this story. It was in Reason Magazine. It was also on InfoWars. A couple in Florida were arrested and charged with felony neglect after their 11-year-old son was left alone in the backyard playing basketball for 90 minutes. The child was taken from the parents and placed into foster care. Why were the police called? Because a busy body neighbor called the police because the parents were stuck in traffic. This is Nazism. This is what the left has wrought in America. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Though this nation has proudly thought of itself as a ethnic melting pot, in things racial, we have always been, and we, I believe, continue to be, in too many ways, essentially a nation of cowards. Okay, he was one of the worst bullies in the history of America. Quiet delivery, no yelling, no screaming. He used affirmative action his entire life to bully his way into positions he was never qualified for. And then, of course, he was picked by the biggest faker in history, Barack Obama, to be our attorney general, where he spent his entire time attacking police, Right now, we have a crime epidemic in New York and other cities because of the policies of this bully. We have a bully in New York City named Mayor de Blasio, who has intimidated the police. Crime is skyrocketing in New York City. City, take it, check it out. He's putting a thousand new cops on the street and he won't admit it's because of his policies that crime is spiraling. Now you've got psychos like Janet Napolitano saying it's microaggressive to talk about micro, excuse me, meritocracy at the University of California. Let me remind you of something. Competition is the basis of humanity. I have been in primitive villages. I didn't understand how people functioned in little villages until I went there back in the 1960s as a young, let us call, anthropologist. And I thought it would be some kind of communist system where everyone got along and shared. Well, guess what? Down at the most simple tribal level, it was extremely competitive. The best hunter became the leader. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? The best hunter became the leader, not the worst hunter, not the crippled hunter, not the perverted hunter, but the best hunter, because otherwise they would starve to death in the village. Well, nothing's ever changed in our society, ever. Everybody can understand that, except the left-wing fanatics who want something for nothing. You know, I am in the midst of the final decisions on who will win these five scholarships. It's been awesome. I've had 1,700 applicants. Many of them are, are so good, it's hard to distinguish uh, so it's been very hard to pick five out of 1,700, but each of them is going to win $20,000 over two years. The five winners, 
I promised $100,000 to the five winners, meaning 20 grand each. And on July 4th, I'll make the final announcement. One of the essays is entitled, Evil Despises Competition. I'll read it to you. It's 500 words for the Michael Savage Scholarship Essay Contest. And here's what a college student wrote. The competitive nature that exists in the United States is a unique quality which has bred a country of winners. Competing is a basic instinct engraved into the fabric of our human DNA. Rather than attempting to suppress man's natural desires like many civilizations before, the founding fathers of this great nation have harnessed this great motivating force and established a nation where fairness and excellence would prevail. The concept of competition has influenced the structure of our government, free markets, and has long kept malicious power-grabbing individuals at bay. Evil has discovered the tremendous power and influence that exists in America and has coveted to make it her own. This is by a college student. While evil seeks the elevated position of power and control, competition offers a level playing field where pure ideas can be spawned and tested. While evil fears competition and finds no joy in it, competition finds joy in the triumph of good over evil. While evil grasps for uncontested domination, competition aspires for excellence. The competitive nature of Americans is a major obstacle to those who wish to control us. A competitive format of government gives voice to refined ideas which can compete to become law. Thus, when implemented correctly, only laws are created which best serve the will of the people. Evil cannot compete with competition. Therefore, evil has employed the use of deception and lies as tools of progress. This is by a college student. Listen carefully. This is only half of it. As you may recall, in 2002, Saddam Hussein won 100% of the votes during the Iraqi presidential elections. These types of tactics demonstrate that evil will even attempt to provide the illusion of competition. Evil has many faces and can be found throughout the corridors of our government, industry, and the institutes of academia. Evil has taken great strides in advancing its agenda. There have been many attempts to change the very def definition of evil. Isaiah, an Old Testament prophet, said, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. Not only is it their wish to redefine evil as good, but they also wish to redefine competition as bad. The results of which have been a decrease in the quality of education and the dumbing down of America. Two more paragraphs. Competition is not evil, the individual writes, but in fact drives the individual to pursue excellence. The same effects can be found anywhere competition is implemented be it sport, business, education, or politics. Competition not only requires boundaries and rules, but also self-regulates the limits of those boundaries based on the invested interests of individuals. Therefore, competition is an ever-changing element which self-adjusts with respect to fairness and the quest for excellence. Competition even honors those who have failed in their pursuits and finds just as much value in the process as they do in the results. Evil cannot replicate these outcomes because evil leads by force, whereas competition is self-motivated. Here's the last paragraph of this essay, which is in the finalists' uh, stack. To be competitive is to be American, and to be an American is to be competitive. The terms are complementary. You cannot mention one without considering the other. These concepts are woven into the fabric of this great nation. If this competitive nature is removed from American government, then America, as we know, it will cease to exist. If America does not exist, then what will the world become? The picture is not a pleasant one. Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, and other evil dictators will finally be uncontested. Evil will dominate our world. As Americans, we should fight to protect our way of life because once evil takes its top prize, competition will not be tolerated. Have I not shown you that all of this bullying is about people who cannot compete on a level playing field, so they're using their sexual orientation, their race, or their disability as a weapon against people who are uh, either by dint of birth or by brains or by hard work superior to them in the world of competition. Write that down because I mean every word I just said. I've spent my entire life trying to succeed in places where I was told I could not succeed. I've been told I would fail where I never failed. I was told I could not win where I won. I was told not to apply for a PhD program, and I applied for it, and I earned my doctorate. I was told I wouldn't last one day in radio because my voice was too New York. I'm in radio for 21 years. Right now, my show is number one on WABC. Right now, my show is number one on many other stations. Who was wrong, them or me? How did I succeed? 
by never giving up, damn it, and I never will give up. As long as I breathe, I will fight for what I believe is right. And what I'm trying to do by example is tell you to stop it. Stop taking it from these twisted freaks. Stand up to them. They're not stronger than you. They're weaker than you. And don't let them use their situation to bully you. These bullies have to be shouted down. Get in their damn face and tell them to go to hell. How's that? I don't care if it's a college administrator. I don't care who it is. Scream in the bully's face. Give it back to them. I don't care if it's Muslims bullying you, telling you that you're a racist. I don't care if it's gays and lesbians bullying you. I don't care if it's street thugs bullying the cops. I don't care if it's lawyers in the ACLU. I don't care if it's illegal aliens screaming that they want rights they're not entitled to. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very, very, very long in this process. I've seen what this has done. I've seen how it's destroyed uh, societies before. In the old days, it came under the guise of fairness. Now it's coming at us from a different point of view. Now it's called white privilege. Now it's called microaggression. But make no mistake about it. <clears throat> you are being bullied out of your life. Your very freedom is at stake. Now, I've said all I want to say right now. I need to take a break. As a matter of fact, uh, you know a few weeks ago I was very sick with a virus illness. I had the first flu I've had in, I don't know, many decades. I, I, don't, I generally don't get sick. And I got very sick, but I went on the air and only missed one day. But I could hardly swallow. I could hardly talk. I'm better, but I'm starting to feel it coming back. And i got to tell you right now, i got to slow it down just a bit. I think I'm overdoing it because I'm very, very excited by what's going on in this world. I see such hatred and such racism being disguised and posed as the opposite that I feel that till my last breath, I'm going to scream about it until you wake up and realize that if you don't stand up, nobody will. There'll be nobody left. Let's take some calls. Jay on WABC, welcome to the Savage Nation. How are you? Well, I just wanted to make a point about something you touched on uh, lately before, which is the NYPD and uh, New York City. Right now, I'm 25 years old, and this summer I'm being hired into the NYPD. And just today, you may have saw Ray Bratton being brought up in the news for uh, some comments he made. That yes, I understand right that he can't. He would hire more blacks if more of them weren't criminals. I saw that. Right, and some of them are absolutely true. And you know, if he has a pool of applicants, which myself as one of them who can't be hired for whatever reason, they should not be. And he's being... Well, wait, wait a minute. Are you saying you're not, you can't be hired? Why not? No, no, I, I'm in the pool of applicants. But some of them happen also to be either black, Hispanic, white, whatever race they are. Why is it such a bad thing for him to say, oh, this person can't be hired because they're a criminal? But no, he gets... Well, anyone who is a criminal or has a criminal background should not be a cop in plain English. Exactly. And the problem is he gets crucified because... He didn't say it in the right way that made people a little bit... I don't care how they said it. Tell the little Nazis to go to hell. That's my answer. Go to hell. What do you want to hire criminals? Why not just go recruit in Rikers Island? Why don't you give them all a badge and a gun in Rikers Island? Tell them to run amok and, and rape and murder in the streets. Exactly. And the people... That's, so that would be my answer if I were the mayor. Get off my back and shut up. Climb back in the hell hole you came from. Listen, I know what's going on in this country. The, the cities are bending over backwards to hire Muslims right now. Do you know that? Did you see that story? I did not, know. Oh, yeah, look at the cities now. They, they have so many flooding in because of Obama, like in Lewiston, Maine, they're going to hire Muslim cops. They don't even know what their background is. Go hire from a pool of terrorists that you brought in that nobody vetted in the State, the State Department. How many of them are members of Al-Qaeda or other groups? They don't know. They don't care. Give them a badge and a gun. That's all. All right, that's it. 855-400-728. It was the Savage Nation. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Uh, the United States is a government of laws uh, and separations of power, and when a, even if it's an individual district court judge who's making this determination, we've okay. got to go through the process. So there is Obama now to, uh, threatening an individual district court judge who stopped his massive violation of his powers when with a stroke of a pen he said he's going to grant amnesty to 5 million illegals to start with and perhaps 100 million when he's finally through after he's decimated America uh, with an overrun from Mexico and China primarily. But he was stopped by this individual district court judge. Suddenly he doesn't like that. 
The next two, uh, two weeks later, he intimidates the Supreme Court. So where do you think this bullying is coming from that we're talking about? It's coming from the biggest bully in American history, Barack Obama.